There are some places on earth that can only be described with superlatives. And today, we're gonna talk about one such place. The Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Hi, my name is Sebastian and you're watching 7 Facts. So, Xinjiang Uyghur or Uyghur, what is this place all about? Why do we need superlatives for this place? Well, let's see. First off, this is China's largest administrative division. It covers 1.6 million square kilometers, which is about the size of Iran or Germany, France, Spain and Portugal put together with some change to spare. Being such a large place and one of the largest country subdivisions in the world, you'd expect it to have a mighty large population, especially in China, right? Well, not so much. Xinjiang Uyghur is home to about 25 million people, which is not a small number, but for a country of 1.4 billion, 25 million is actually nothing. Be that as it may, this region is not a boring place. Geographically, it's a mixture of mighty mountains, harsh deserts, oases and jaw-dropping landscapes. And when I say mighty mountains, I'm not kidding. The highest peak goes 8,611 meters above sea level, that peak being the famous K2, Earth's second highest mountain. The lowest point, by the way, is at minus 154 meters at Iding Lake. Demographically, well, this region is split between several dozen ethnic groups who speak over 40 languages. The Uyghurs or Uyghurs hold the majority, and Islam is the main religion. Which is why, by the way, this place has also been known as Turkestan and Altushar, Kashgaria, Chinese Tartary, Chagatai, Surindia, Dzungaria, Junbu, to name a few. The current name, Xinjiang, by the way, means New Frontier or Old Land Newly Returned. Okay, that's a lot of info to unpack and there are also some bad things going on here that we're gonna talk about. But first, as usual, we have to explain the history of this region. This piece of land is actually one of the most sought after regions in history. It switched hands between masters oh so many times. These are just the highlights. The early history of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region dates back to the Bronze Age around 2000 BC. The region was home to several ancient civilizations including the Tocharians, Indo-European speaking people and the Yueji who migrated from the Gansu region of China. Some of these people left behind some remarkably well preserved mummies and there's a whole debate going on as to who these people really were. There's a video I made about it years ago so be sure to check it out. In the first millennium BC, the region became a crossroads for the trade routes connecting China to Central Asia and Europe and various empires fought for control of the area. The powerful Chinese Han Dynasty established control over the Tarim Basin in the 2nd century BC, bringing it under the administration of the Western Han and establishing a military garrison in the region. The Han Dynasty also established the Silk Road which brought an influx of traders and travelers to the area and many of the cities along the route prospered, cities like Kashgar and Turpan. The Han Chinese influence was weak, however, and the Turim Basin remained under the control of local tribe groups. The region was also influenced by Buddhism which arrived along the Silk Road in the 1st century AD and many Buddhist temples and monasteries were built. In the 3rd century AD, the Turim Basin fell under the control of the Kushan Empire which was based in what is now Afghanistan and Pakistan. The Kushans controlled much of the region for several centuries and their rule saw the spread of Buddhism and the construction of even more important religious sites. But by the end of the 4th century, the Turim Basin was under the control of various small kingdoms like Gaochang and the Quiji. These kingdoms were conquered by the Tang dynasty in the 7th century, bringing the region under Chinese control once again. During this time, the Silk Road trade flourished and many foreign merchants and diplomats traveled through the region. By the 9th century, Xinjiang was again divided into several small city-states including the Buddhist city-state of Khotan and the Islamic city-state of Kashgar. The Uyghurs, who were a Turkic ethnic group, began to migrate into the region and played a significant role in its history. 
In the 10th century AD, the Karakhanid Khanate, a Turkic Islamic state, conquered the place and from this moment onward, the region saw the emergence of Islamic influence as Arab traders and missionaries entered the area. Islamization gradually took hold in Xinjiang and by the 16th century, most of the Uyghur population had converted to Islam. The Karakhanid Khanate was eventually replaced by the Seljuk Empire and later the Mongol Empire and then the Chagatai Khanate in the 14th century. During the Qing Dynasty, Xinjiang was incorporated again into the Chinese Empire and became a province in 1884. The Qing Dynasty's control over the region was challenged by the Uyghur-led Dungan Revolt in the mid-19th century, which resulted in the deaths of millions of people. The province was later controlled by warlords during the early 20th century. After the fall of the Qing Dynasty, Xinjiang became a contested region between the Chinese Republic and the Soviet Union with various factions vying for control. In 1949 though, the People's Republic of China was established and Xinjiang became an autonomous region in 1955. However, tensions between the Uyghur population and the Chinese government have continued to simmer, leading to periodic outbreaks of violence and unrest. In recent years, the Chinese government has been accused of systematic human rights abuses against the Uyghur population. The situation in Xinjiang has drawn international condemnation, with some countries imposing sanctions on China in response. Today, the region remains a politically sensitive and highly contested area with ongoing issues surrounding ethnic tensions, economic development and human rights. The most remote city from any sea on the planet is at the same time the capital of Xinjiang Uyghur, the city of Urumqi. A historically leading cultural and trade center, this city of 4 million is a wonderful mixture of art, culture, history, industry and ethnic diversity. For over 2000 years, the area around Urumqi, a heavenly landscape of lush pastures, attracted many people who herded sheep and cattle, which is where the city got its name from, Urumqi actually meaning beautiful pastures in Mongolian. Despite being one of the most remote cities of the world, it always managed to attract travelers, merchants, immigrants and soldiers. Today there is still plenty to see and do in Urumqi, but probably the number one landmark of the city is its Grand Bazaar, the largest market of its type in the entire world, covering more than 4 hectares. The bazaar reproduces the commercial prosperity of the Silk Road and embodies the ethnic characteristics of the city with a primarily Islamic architectural style. There is no way you can miss this bazaar if you're in Urumqi, nor should you bypass the city itself. Xinjiang is home not just to various peoples or grand markets, but also some pretty spectacular geographical features. One of them is the Taklamakan Desert, one of the largest sandy deserts in the world. Roughly the size of Germany, this desert, while beautiful and tempting, is quite dangerous. Its name says it all. Taklamakan in Uyghur means, go in and you won't come out. Here you can encounter temperatures between minus 20 and plus 40 degrees Celsius, plus apocalyptic sandstorms that come out of nowhere and can last for days. And yet, the Silk Road once crossed this mighty desert and around the rare oases of Taklamakan, cities like Kashgar, Turpan or Hotar sprang up and welcome visitors to this day. Ok, since you're in such an extreme place, let's find something even more extreme. How about the second lowest point on Earth? At minus 154 meters below the sea level, the Turpan depression isn't just a low point on Earth's surface. It's also the hottest and driest area in China. And yet, it's been a vital stop on the Silk Road. It's still dotted with many ancient ruins, temples and cities, it has a complex and ancient irrigation system and is by no means empty but rich with a surprisingly large and diverse range of wildlife. Ok, let's leave these extreme places and check out what else is there in Xinjiang. And what do you know, the region is also home to some of the world's most beautiful natural landscapes. You may never heard of the Heavenly Lake, the Kanas Lake or the Flaming Mountains, but even just seeing the pictures attracts your attention. Seeing them with your own eyes kinda makes you understand why one might believe these to be proof of a creator's existence. 
And of course, we can't forget K2, also known as Mount Godwin Austin. The second highest peak in the world, K2 is located on the border between Pakistan and China in the Karakoram mountain range. It's considered to be one of the world's most difficult and dangerous mountains to climb due to its unpredictable weather conditions, steep and rocky terrain and frequent avalanches. 1954 was the year humans first reached this peak and since then 350 people have followed but 80 died on their way. As previously mentioned, this place is a melting pot of ethnic groups. So let's name a couple of them. Well, there are of course the Uyghur people and there are also the Han Chinese. And then there are the Kazakhs, Hui, Kyrgyz, Mongols, Tajiks, Shibe, Manchus, Tujia, Uzbeks, Russians, Miao, Daos, Tibetans, Zhuang, Tatars and Solars, to name a few. In all, there are 47 ethnic groups in Xinjiang and that's quite the diversity. As of making this video, the Uyghurs are still the main ethnic group at around 45% of the total population. So it's only fair to answer the question, who are these people, where did they come from and what they're all about. The Uyghurs are a Turkic ethnic group primarily living in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region of China but as well as in other Central Asian countries and Turkey. The origins of the Uyghurs are unclear but they are believed to have migrated to the region from Mongolia and Siberia in the 8th century. They were originally nomadic herders but over time they adopted agriculture and settled into oasis towns along the Silk Road. They have a distinct language, culture and history that sets them apart from the dominant Han Chinese population in China and other Turkic nations. The Uyghur language belongs to the Karluk branch of the Turkic language family and has its own unique script based on Arabic. As you may have already guessed, the Uyghurs are predominantly Muslim with most practicing Sunni Islam. Historically, these people have been involved in trade and commerce and their location along the Silk Road made them a strategic crossroads for cultural and economic exchange between Europe, the Middle East and Asia. In recent years though, the Uyghur people have been subject to discrimination, human rights abuses and cultural suppression by the Chinese government which has led to protests and international condemnation. And this is when we get into the bad stuff I was talking about. First, we need to create a bit more context. As you saw from the brief history lesson, Xinjiang Uyghur is not necessarily a cradle of Chinese civilization but has a long and incredibly complex history. And even now, the dominant ethnic groups are not Chinese, which is why to this day the name Turkestan is still in circulation. And it's also the name of a movement that demands separation from China the East Turkestan Independence Movement. This is a political and social movement that seeks independence from China for the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region which the movement refers to as East Turkestan. This movement is primarily driven by Uyghur nationalists and separatists who feel that the region's rich history, cultural heritage and autonomy have been systematically suppressed by the Chinese government. It has existed in various forms since the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949 and draws inspiration from other leaders and organizations from the Republican and Imperial times. It gained momentum in the late 1990s and early 2000s fueled by Uyghur discontent with government policies and increased violence between Uyghurs and Chinese authorities. The Chinese government has cracked down on the movement, often labeling it as terrorism and accusing its leaders of being separatists, extremists and religious fundamentalists. The government has used various tactics to suppress the movement including mass arrests, forced assimilation and increased surveillance. The separatist conflict associated with the movement has led to numerous acts of violence and unrest in the region including bombings, assassinations, riots and clashes between Uyghurs and the authorities. The most notable of these incidents occurred in 2009 when rioting in the Xinjiang capital of Urumqi resulted in the deaths of almost 200 people and the injury of more than 1700. The conflict has drawn international attention and criticism with many human rights organizations calling for an end to the Chinese government's suppression of the Uyghur people and their culture. 
And from here, things go from bad to worse. There have been numerous reports of human rights abuses against the Uyghur people in Xinjiang. These abuses are not minor incidents, but include forced labor, forced sterilization, torture, arbitrary detention, and religious and cultural suppression. The Chinese government has been accused of implementing a system of mass surveillance and control, with over a million Uyghurs and other minorities reportedly detained in re-education camps. Authorities have also been accused of implementing a range of other policies targeting Uyghurs, including strict control on religious practice and expression, restrictions on language and cultural traditions, and forced assimilation into Han Chinese culture. Uyghurs who resist or criticize these policies are often subjected to arrest, torture, and other forms of persecution. The situation has been described as a genocide by some human rights organizations and governments due to the severity and scale of the abuses as well as the apparent intent to destroy the Uyghur culture and identity. The Chinese government of course denies these accusations, stating that the camps are vocational training centers and that some measures are necessary for countering terrorism and separatism in the region. However, the United States and several other countries have labeled the situation in Xinjiang as a genocide. In 2021, the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom and the European Union announced sanctions against Chinese officials for their role in the abuses against Uyghurs and other ethnic minority groups in Xinjiang. The situation in this region remains a highly controversial and contentious issue in international relations. As to how it's going to end, I'm afraid I don't have the answer to that. And that's all for today's episode, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. Leave your comments downstairs and if you wish to do so, you can help out this channel through my Patreon page. I do hope to see you next time. Bye.